Welcome you to celebrate St. Bonaduce's Day with us once again on behalf of the Mutton and Mead Tavern. Huzzah! As many of you know, my family, the Goodales, have been holding this most auspicious festival of peace and unity for almost as long as we have been keepers of our most beloved tavern. And we can only hope that there will be more to celebrate in the years to come. Oi, my Aye. loving husband. Perhaps when King Richard returns to our lands, sets things back to the rightful order, we will have peace and unity in our shire once more. Uh, uh, Breda, my love, perhaps it is best that we not start such conversation so early in the den. I see not why I should hold my tongue merely because of the hour of the day when the sheriff and Prince John see fit to inflict cruelties upon us today, or otherwise. Father, I see you are having no problems entertaining these most noble ladies on this death. My dear Mary, you, you must forget me. I was merely giving these fine nobles the attention of the presentation. Aye, aye, aye. And thee as well. Hi, Lord Fitzwalter. It's good to see you again. Hopefully this year will not be as so warm as last. Mayhap there is something you could do to keep the heat off of me. I feel I'm already beginning to glisten. I shall see what I can do about that. For pertaining to blood, you must be talking to the good fire cook that And in the meantime, Perhaps if you were to lose a little bit of your finery, 
your mind to find a climb if you're this more comfortable. But it is expected of me to look my absolute best on this Saint Bonaduce's day. I do it on behalf of the people. Sacrifice that I must make. It is most urgent. Oh, I do so love the customs and practices of the Shire folk. They're all just so adorable with their bucolic and pastoral ways. Think you not so, Lady Stark? Aye, Lady Fair. Well, if you ask me, some of these pastoral folk on the bathing more frequently. Really standing downwind with their battles. <laughs> now, Lady Stark. Every denizen of the Shire is a family member to me, and I care about each and every one, regardless of the situation. Besides, I find the cloud of bigotry that often surrounds those of noble birth to be far more foul. My <laughs> lady Marion, that sounds, shall I say it, rather revolutionary. If decency and humanity are to be mistaken for revolution, Mayhap such a revolt would not necessarily be an evil. Make way for the Lord and Lady Osborne, as well his High Sheriff of Nottingham! Rise, rise! More visiting nobles? I do believe that the Shire is finally getting some quality. Oh, but mayhap I shall have to visit the jewelers to add to my finery. Lord and Lady Osborne, this is the most unexpected pleasure indeed. It is so gracious of you to join us on this most glorious Saint Bonaduce's day. Ah, oh, Lady Marion, you are too kind. And may I wish you also a happy St. Bonnie Dookie Day to be called. <laughs> uh, did someone say Dookie? Oh, oh. Dookie oh. Uh, like some of it's kind of bonny, too, if you know what I mean. Oh. Oh. No, my lord, St. Bonaduce Day uh, is the one day a year we open our Shire to one and all to celebrate peace and unity. On this midsummer celebration, no blade shall be drawn, no blood shall be spilt, and no arrests shall be made. Oh, I see. How how quaint, yes. Quaint. Sheriff, do tell. You open your town to outlaws and scoundrels, and yet promise that no one shall be punished for the transgressions. How oh, has that been working out for you? Oh, in the past there have been certain difficulties. But I suppose just this one day a year, we must open our festivities. My lord. You are most welcome to enjoy our humble festival. As the owners and purveyors of the Mutton and Meat Tavern, my wife and I would like to welcome you to the day. Ah, yes, I have heard of this uh, Mutton and Meat Tavern and look most forward to seeing it firsthand. Oi, if that goes to be your pleasure, my lord, might I invite you to join us at 12 and 30 for one of our most cherished St. Bonaduce's Day traditions. The tavern scene. I oh. shall be there, Mistress Ale. Ale wife, is it? <laughs> it is good ale, my lord. Yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I come on this person's path, lady. There is in sooth, I come on the business of His Majesty, Prince John. The Prince? The Prince? Oh dear! For that shan't bode well for us, for it ne'er does. However, this business shall wait for later. For the moment, I am 
enchanted by this little festival of yours. Uh, tell me, you there? Yes, you. Some sort of scullery maid, I imagine? Oh, yes, Your Lordship. I am Alice Rodright. Uh, my cousin Isabella and I are the town of women. Why, yes, of course you are. <laughs> Tell me, what do peasant folks such as yourself do on a festival such as this? Uh, there be many fascinating spectacles this day. Oh, and I do it with all the fine garments and textiles, and so on, so at the many uncertain merchants and several What of oils, perfumes? And what a food and drink, music, sport. <laughs> Not quite what I had in mind. You then, Jamal. Some sort of drover or shepherd, I think. I might be wretched shepherds, and I have brought aid to my most prized chief to the butcher early this morning. So there shall be plenty of mutton. I must apologize, Master Potts. My son was supposed to deliver it two hours ago. Boy, what have you done with the mutton? Oh, with the blacksmith again? I am most sorry, Father. I was assisting the copper with the forge, and I fear that I may have become this is all well and good, but you are a butcher, son, not a blacksmith. Aside from the mutton, there are many delectable foods to be found from hither and yon. What? There are giant turkey legs and sausages and wondrous sweetmeats and from Normandy, exotic fried potatoes. And there are so many things. I think that it would be wondrous. Aye, lady. Oh, take me. I was hungry. There does to be plenty to drink as well, my lord. Aye, ah. the barley and hops from these families. And I will be adding the sounds of me pipes and drums to the voices of the wandering warblers. Oi, my lord, it shall be the great pleasure of the wandering warblers to provide a feast for your ears on this den. Oi, and speaking of feasts, there are to be hamburgers and ice cream and most wondrous, wondrous food. Mistress Whippoorwill, I do so hope we shall find some moment of time that there is not food within your mouth, or else I fear these good gentles shall ne'er hear us perform. And all of the mighty knights on horseback competing in the joust tournament system. Oh, and their clothes do be getting most dirty as well. Which serves to remind me of the body sing. Aye, my lord, you cannot forget the body sing. <laughs> no, yes, the body sing. You mustn't miss the body sing. <laughs> Aye, well, what interests me the most is the £12, three shilling festival licensing tax, oh. which was due this morn, but which oh. has yet to be paid. Master Goodale. Aye. My Lord Sheriff, we found ourselves in need of a, a humble sum of that coin with which to pay the merchant for the two barrels of pickled baby rabbit spleen that you yourself did to order specially for the festival den. Uh, the merchant, a most surly man of your previous acquaintance, with but one eye and no ears, he did to refuse all payment save gold. However, we are shy but a modest amount, and it is festival den. We shall have the money to you by midday. Ah, yes, the old ply the sheriff with pickled baby rabbit spleen routine, is it? <laughs> Truth be told, I do enjoy them so. Very well, it'll be 13 pounds in my hand by the midday sun. Do not disappoint me. I have a very busy day, and I do not wish to add the repossession of your tavern to my agenda. Gisborne, attend to the details. Sire. 
Gizmo. Sir Guy of Gizmo, your reputation precedes you. Why, if half the tales I've heard about you are true, I shall find much use for you in my employ. Actually, my lord, it is merely Guy of Gisborne, not Sir Guy. His family of Scotchin has been tarnished a bit as of late. All right, <clears throat> what are the festival preparations then? Are the gates secured? Any sign of that outlaw, Robin of the Hood, and his so-called gang of merry men of the Greenwood? Not as of yet, my lord, but I expect to see those filthy brigands' faces before too long. Any time one speaketh of devils, they shall come. Oh, Robin Hood, as if on you. It is the beginning of the most glorious Saint Bonaduce's day, is it not, little John? Aye, Robin, not. it is. And it does to bring me much joy. Oh, <laughs> to see my family on this day. Oh, my dearest Bloody, how the witches have grown cold without the warmth of our heart. And our love for each other to thawed my aching heart. Aye, it is to be most difficult. My dearest love, I pine for the day when King Richard returns and brings rightful order to the place. Then perhaps we can put this chapter behind us and return to the life we once knew. I myself Robert, my son, I promise that I shall return to the warmth of our home the moment that I find a way. Oh, this is just so very touching. But I would not go increasing your weekly order to the ale merchant just yet, Molly Little. And as for you, oh, Robin of the Hordes, I was wondering when you might show your face, taking advantages of the traditions of this holiday to come into town and cause trouble as usual, no doubt. Of course not, my dear Sheriff. We merely wish to enjoy this glorious festival day and do our part to spread goodwill. Oh, and might that spread of the goodwill have anything to do with the chest of gold coins that were stolen from the royal tax courier on its way out of town yesterday? We would, of course, know nothing of this robbery of which you speak. <laughs> Much. Do you know anything about this alleged robbery? Nay, Robin. No, it does to show why we take great lengths to secure the safety of the good people of Bushire. The green would be a most dangerous place for others. Isn't that right, Zach? Right is correct. There is no end to the dangers that one might fall prey to upon the road. Is that not correct, Will Scarlet? Will! Oh, hi! <clears throat> <laughs> that depends on your definition of ill, you filthy maggot! Perhaps you'd like to put your face May we please try to not fight on one festival day? It is clearly your so-called Uncle Gisborne's dogs that is the cause of this fight. I fear your affections for the wicked man do blind you to the realities that surround you. Aye. Speak of dogs, Hood, yet your man Scarlet conducts himself as not but a lascivious hound in Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> and as for well affection and wickedness and that which surrounds my my dear Catherine, you know how it pains me that this woman whom I raised from a wee child has fallen so low as to be cavorting in the greenwood of a pack of depraved curs. Oh, no. Your concern for me is most appreciated, but I am a grown woman, and surely I can fend for myself, can I not? Depraved curse! Oi, depraved! That is rich coming from the likes of you. What advantages do you take on the townspeople daily? Aye. Aye. What degradations have you inflicted this very day? Hi! I wish that you two could see that you are not so different. You both care for the Shire in your own ways, and I know that you both do share a love of its of its people. I think she's Lady Mary. Robin. 
Cat, you speak often of the hidden valor of your uncle Gisborne. Most well hidden. I admit I see it not, nor do I think I e'er shall again. The good man you remember has long since been cast by the wayside. <clears throat> I think it is well known by almost all assembled here how much I despise this ridiculous holiday I of no blood and no blades. So let us just skip the pretense and go straight to the school. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It is the same with you two. As a fly for the unfair tax of the prince and the cruel subjugating of the sheriff or not enough, are we to I know you care not for this holiday, but if you care at all for me, please sheathe your blade and let the rest of us enjoy the den. My lady, you are correct. Tis a day of peace and celebration. No matter our feelings for each other the rest of the year, might we once again try for a day without conflict or strife. Oi, Robin, let us try. And so... Let us celebrate!